This is such a great new feature from Amazon Gut Duty, a threat detection service for AWS environments. So if you see over here, it's something called the attack sequences. And what it does is that it helps us understand sophisticated attacks. And I have already triggered one of that using a sequence of activities to gain access into the AWS workload and then followed by for example, in our case, to take data out of the S3 buckets. So if I scroll down a little more, you can see right here, we have something called as a critical finding. I'll go ahead and click onto it. You can see right here, we have the following, potential data compromise of one or more S3 buckets involving a sequence of actions associated with assumed role slash EC2. So if I go ahead and click onto it right now, you can see over here, we have the following, all right, a sequence of actions involving two signals. So if I scroll now further, we have the finding ID, of course, the region in this case is in Singapore, AP Service One, the account. So in my case, I am logged into AWS account. This is my delegated security account. So I'm streaming all these different findings through gut duty or, or any other security services into this central security account. And we can scroll down further. We can see the following attack sequence. This is super neat, super cool. And it is out of the box with Amazon Gut Duty. You can see the following here. The first signal is the API get parameter was invoked from a Kali Linux computer. All right, so you can see over here we have the EC2 in question. It is from Pentest IM user Kali Linux. You know, we have the following access key. I also have a get object was invoked from a remote host potentially running Kali Linux too. So we targeted hacker log test bucket. We have this specific EC2 in question and also the access key. You can also see right here we have indicators so you can go ahead and expand on that. So we have high risk API. So almost everything that you do in AWS are API calls. So in this case, you can tell from here from the signals of the attack sequence, so we have the high risk API that's been called like get objects, trying to download things from the S3 bucket, listing all the available S3 buckets, listing the objects within the S3 buckets. We just have get parameter. So there are situations where in the parameter store under systems manager service, you could have some kind of secrets. Like for example, I am access keys, database usernames and passwords. So those could be contained within parameter store or secrets manager, and someone will attempt to enumerate those services and those data that are stored, information to store within all these different services. And of course, we have the attack tactic. All right, so this is something that we can see like credential access, discovery, and so on. And furthermore, if I expand on the actors, we can see the actor in question, and we can search. So if you're doing threat hunting in AWS, so let's say you have security leak, you have cloud trails, data sources, you have VPC flow loss, and so on. You can look at actors, you can look at the endpoint, the IP addresses, or if you have Amazon Detective, you can also search more specifically for all these different types of activities that are occurring in your AWS environment. Scrolling down further, we have the resources. All right, so in this case, we have the target hacker log task bucket. We have the EC2 instance. Again, these are owned by the member accounts, not from the delegated administrator. So in this case, we also have the access key, and this access key is, in this case, all right, tied to a specific EC2 instance, so likely some kind of instance metadata credential exfiltration that led to that. Now, zooming out, what I can do is to move from the potential data compromise. So in this case, we have of one or more S3 buckets involving a sequence of events. So you can see over here, we have Kali Linux. I can click onto this. I can scroll down further, and there's something called view finding details. So let's go ahead and click onto that. So this are individual finding that then gets placed together under the attack sequence because they're co-related. So this is a great intelligence from God Duty that can do this automatically for us. Now with that, it means that I can pave it over. I can click on to investigate with detective and I can either start off defining or any of these entities that we are seeing over here. So it could be defining itself. It could be the resources like EC2, AWS account, role sessions and so on. And I can go in and click onto it. So say for example, I click onto get duty finding, it would open up a new tab for us. And from here, this is where we begin the investigation process. All right, so let me go in and click onto go to finding group. Why not? All right, so let's go in and click onto that. And you can see right here, 
we have the following observe tactics. So there is execution, there is other, and if I scroll down further, there's a visualization. This is really neat, and I really like this a lot. Because if you see right here, we have, for example, the EC2 in question. We have network reachability. And again, you're able to click onto them and see that, hey, this is a low finding of software and configuration checks. And I can see Kali Linux all right, appearing twice. So the API get object was invoked from a remote host, potentially running Kali Linux. Uh, the get parameter, same thing, all right, was also invoked. And if I scroll and zoom out a little more, I can see over here, there's an EC2 role, all right? And this role has newly observed API call. So this is an unusual behavior. And furthermore, we can see newly observed user agent. I can extend on this, I can expand onto it, all right? And we can see right here, this is the new user agent observed from IAM role, all right? So that means that typically the EC2 role was not used by that. So in this case, we are looking for anomalies. So that was a role that is behavior that's very new, and I can click onto further IP addresses so we can zoom down further. All right, there's also malicious file. All right, three security risks detected, including application Linux generic. So meaning that, hey, there is a malware inside the EC2, so it could be planted by the bad actor. So there are a lot of tally matrices that link all up into this called the finding group in Amazon Detective that really helps in terms of threat investigation. So you got your finding trigger from gut duty, now you have Detective for you to go into the threat hunting, threat investigation phase. So again, a perfect service, I highly recommend you turn it on. It gives you a lot, a lot more tally matrix rather than looking into the raw logs. What I want to highlight here is the scope time section. And this is automatically done up for you based on all the indicators that we're seeing here. So what we have here is 14th of January to 25th of January. And of course you have the UTC time. And right now, part of recording, this is on the 30th of January, 2025. So we are way ahead. And this was something that was doing to test out the services in terms of threat detection and threat investigation. And of course we have the observe tactics like execution, order, and so on. But what's really neat here, really, really powerful is if I scroll down further, okay, you can see right here, there's something called a play button. And this is regarding the timeline. So if you see over here with the timeline, all right, from the following time and date and so on. And what we can do is we can play it. So I can say select onto it. Okay, so we can filter. So perhaps I just want to take a look at those that are considered more not informational, not information, and I can play it. So if I play it, we can see what's going on regarding the visualization here. So what I'm gonna do now is to scroll down, I'm gonna zoom out a little more so you can see what's going on. All right, I know it's not as easy to see, but you have an idea of how it's going to look like. So what I'll do now is go ahead and let me just scroll down a little bit. Is there any way for me to scroll down a little more? Okay, maybe I will just put this here. And what I'll do now is go ahead and click onto the play button. All right, you can see right here we're playing. And you can see this is the first part, right? So the first part is network reachability onto the EC2 in question, all right? And of course, we have the other timeline and then followed by, in the following we have, all right, in August, we start to have CVEs associated with the EC2 instance. And of course, we can click onto it, all right? The CV is gonna come from, say, in our case, I could expand onto it, coming from inspector. So inspector allow us to look for vulnerabilities within our workloads, okay, so pretty neat. So while we're playing, you can start seeing that we're gonna start expanding on it with several more high findings over time. And you can see right here, I can pause it, and this is the first part, okay, and it's happening in the earlier part of January. And we can see, for example, in this case, all right, I'm tracing back in time to see what's going on. We have malicious file, we have reverse shell, all right, and all these are associated to the EC2. We have CVEs and network reachability as well. Now that I've paused it, I can go back and play on it again. And then now we have a complete picture of what's going on. So this is a fantastic feature, a really, really neat feature, and I highly recommend you turn it on, see what is going on, run through your investigation on it. So if I scroll down further, 
We also have the involved finding. So if you want to pivot away from the visualization earlier, you want to dive deeper into the findings or into the entities, you have the ability to do that. All right, so you can click into the EC2 in question, you can click into the role session in question, and so on, okay? Or the other wonderful option here is to run investigation. So in this case, you can see the following. We have an EC2 role, all right? And it seems to be having a lot of findings here, like get parameter, get object, new user agent, and so on. And I can go ahead and click on to run investigation, all right? And you can see that we have the start date to the end date. So the start date, I'm gonna change this over into say seven days before 25th. So perhaps on the 17th. All right, so with that, I can click confirm. And then now is generating the report against a target. Okay, so we can look at the active investigations from there. I can scroll down further. Again, I was doing some of these different types of penetration testing on the workloads like reverse shells, triggering all these different sorts of findings within the AWS environment. So we can see all these details right here. So again, great service for us to use. So on the left side, I can click and expand onto that and can go ahead and click onto investigations. So right here, we have the following. All right, so we have the investigation that we perform. And I can click onto this one here, say for example, the one that was run on the 30th of January, I can click onto that. And you can see right here, we have the following. Okay, so the EC2 role summary, we observe anomalous behavior for the role from 17 January to 25th January, indicating potential compromise, okay? And they invoke called trail management actions method to impact MITRE tactics. And we can see the scope time, we can see the EC2 role, and I can scroll down further, we can see like high severity, medium severity, low severity, and we can scroll down further. And there are things like discovery. I can click onto that, I can select onto the point here. We can see the IP address, as well as things that have been executed. Then we can continue clicking onto the next technique. So in this case, we have privilege escalation. Okay, you can see here we have an attached role policy. And screw it down further, there is persistence. So the bad actor is trying to have persistent access. And you can see one successful and 177 failed attempt. So they try to update the assume role policy over here. That's also impact. All right, so you can see here, again, we can see the following again. So they seem to be fairly similar in terms of update assume role policy. Likewise for this. Okay, the only one is a little different is at the bottom here. So persistent access likewise can be through the creation of an IM user or for example, in this case, we have create access key. Scrolling up, we can go over to the next tab under indicators. And from indicators, we can look for things like, for example, new user agent. So we have Python, Boto Core, Linux, Lango, Boto Core, and so on and so forth. Again, user agent can easily be changed by the bad actors. So they could be changing up and just flooding it with different user agent values. So that could be that could be another option that they are trying to work on as well, to just flood it with different type of user agent information. So those could be the things that they're doing as well. Okay, so we can zoom in a lot more like get policies, least attachable policies and so on by clicking into all these different indicators. The next feature that's really useful here is the ability to search specifically. So in this case, I've selected onto AWS role, but based on the information that we gotten earlier from either God Duty or Detective, we can go further. So in this case, I'm looking up for a specific identifier for AWS role. And we can see right here, we have a principal ID. And now I can go ahead and click onto that. And it will give us the information in regard to this entity. So this is an AWS role, all right? I can increase the scope time. So I wanna go ahead and click onto 14 days, click update scope time. And I can see here, if I go down further, we can see finding groups that's associated with it. I can see a high investigation, all right? And we can see the findings, right? So we have the get object, potential data compromise of one or more. So this was the one that we look into deeply. We have the get parameter as well. So this is the EC2 role in question, all right? We have the call volume. So this is really useful because for the call volume, we can see where were all of these activities, all right? So we have the successful calls, and we also have a lot of failed calls. So if I click onto this one, all right, set time interval, and I scroll down further, you can see the following, okay? So we have the IP address calling from Singapore, so this is the place that I'm residing in. I can expand onto it and see what's going on, all right? So we have one failed, 
and 177 fail from 18, 143, 187, 178. So a lot to do with IAM. Scrolling back all the way to the top, we can also select onto new behavior. So we can look at newly observed geolocations. Are they doing impossible jumps? So say for example, it was a specific IAM user role and they always log in for Singapore. And an hour later, they log in from another part of the world, which is impossible jump. So that can be what we consider as newly observed geolocations. All right, so we can scroll down further. We can look at all these different counts of the API calls, okay? We also have resource interaction, all right? So in this case, hey, this EC2 role is trying to work with another role called vulnerable Python code. And we can see right here, there is one of this, assumptions of two. Why would an EC2 role try to assume into another role. So that's pretty interesting as well, right? So we can scroll down further and see this or what's going on, all right? Role assumption, okay, in this case, EC2 role is the origin and then to a target, in this case, we have the vulnerable Python code. So why is this going on? And if I click onto this, we can see here, vulnerable Python code escalator, all right? And we can see the behaviors, all right, with overall API calls and so on and so forth whether it was used to run any type of enumeration or further attempts or actions on it. Use it to improve your security control, security posture, your threat detection, features, functions, rules, building blocks, and so on. Make your cloud environment much more secure. Take care and see you on the other side.